Aren't you just the handsomest, most perfect little thing I've ever seen? Yes, you are. You are my pride and joy. Do you know that? Yes, you sure are. It wasn't easy getting you in this world, you know that? But I would do it again in a minute to have you. Mm -hmm. I wish your papa could see you, baby. Oh, I wish your papa could see you. I thought I'd never see you again. You've given me a beautiful son, Brenda. Yes, I have. May I hold him? He has your eyes and he has your nose. A little of my chin. Oh, Steve. Come along now, son. Steve, what are you... Where are you taking him? The baby must come with me now. Where? Where are you going to take the baby? To the other side. Steve, don't do that. Come. Oh, God, I can't move. Steve, bring me that baby back. The son belongs with his father. No. Steve, come back with that baby. No. no. You're a coward, you know that? You send a woman to do your dirty work, and you attack my wife to get at me. What's the matter, Bo? You afraid to deal with me more directly? Or maybe you like hiding behind skirts. Just take it outside. Hey, hey, let's go outside. hey someone got a problem here? Yeah, nothing I can't handle. You're gonna handle picking your teeth up off the ground and trying to get them back in that fat mouth. Bo, you're gonna have, on, you're gonna have Miss Kramer you're right? knock them out for you, huh? Hey, come on, both of you, stop! Don't hold them back, Cord. Be the first time you had the nerve to face me. Listen, Grant. Now you listen to me. You can play this game, but I've had a lot more experience playing it than you, so I suggest you back off. No, I suggest... Hey, 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 you mind, you mind? This is a party here. Come on, a party. We know, have a good time. Come on, let's just cool down here. What are you so afraid of? I don't understand how a box of my grandfather's mementos could turn your world upside down and cause my father to want to leave town. What is in that box? This box should never have left at Turner should have stayed in the mausoleum where it belonged. Well, I'm sorry that I brought it out. Because I did it, it's my responsibility. No, 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 it's not your responsibility. My goodness, you were only trying to help your father. You had no way of knowing. Knowing what, Vicky? Please trust me. Please let me help you. Megan, there was more in this box than what you saw. There's a secret compartment in it. And in the secret compartment, there was a marriage certificate. Your father's and mine. Believe me, I was just as shocked as you are now. I, I knew absolutely nothing about it. I had no recollection of the ceremony or anything until I showed the certificate to your father. He told me a little bit about it, and then it all came back to me. You were married as Nikki Smith? No. No, no, no. We were married before the explosion. Well, how did you keep your father from finding out? Or did he? No, no, no. That was quite a problem, though. We couldn't get married by a local minister, and eloping was out of the question. So we were married by the minister who lived in Eterna, Reverend Harper. So the ceremony took place in Eterna? No, no. Your father smuggled Reverend Harper out. <laughs> and we were married in our poppy field on Lantano Mountain. Oh, that sounds so romantic and dangerous. We were so incredibly happy and so terribly in love. And we really thought we could overcome any obstacle that got in our way, including my father and Danton Gordon. But apparently Danton found out about it somehow and demanded that Roger give him the marriage certificate and never see me again. As you know, we continued to see each other. I didn't realize that Roger was risking his life every time he did so. And then, of course, the explosion occurred. Wait a minute, Vicky. If you and my father were married, then I'm your legitimate daughter. That makes all the difference in the world. Oh, Megan, no, no. There's something you don't understand. No, no, no. I know exactly what you're going to say. If my father was already married when he married my mother, then that means that their marriage is not legitimate, and, and neither is Sarah. So... Sarah was the illegitimate one all along, not me. 
Michael, please stop hey. this. Come on. The lady has given you very good advice. I suggest you take it. If you got any more plans of stirring up trouble, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Well, Bo, got to hand it to you and the Buchanans. You really know how to rally the troops, don't you? You were the one that wanted to fight. With good reason, sir. Thanks to you and yours, my hotel business is practically dead. My reputation shot. You did that all by yourself, Did I? Man. Go ahead. Turn them all against me. I don't care. I don't need them. I'm used to spending my whole life without them. Michael, stop this before it gets into another fight. More good advice from the lady, Grant. This is not over yet. You have challenged me, mister, and I have every intention of responding. What's that all about? I... I have no idea. All right, folks, come on. Show's over. Let's get back to this party. Yeah, yeah. Hey, party oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, well, Melinda, it's not your fault. No, no, it is. I, I should have talked to you before I tried to interview my father. You tried to interview him? Earlier today, and it didn't go very well, but I didn't think he'd take it out on you, and I certainly did not mean to start a war. Oh, no, no, this has been going on for a long time. And I'll be honest with you, I dream about just dragging one right across his jaw. Maybe Vicki Buchanan has forgiven him for everything he put her through. I'm not ready to let him off the hook yeah, just am yet. Am I going to have the same conversation with you I had with your brother? About what? About taking the law into your own hands. Herb, justice is justice. Someday, I'm going to make sure that Michael Grand gets what's coming to him. Not tonight, though, OK? How about my meat glass of champagne? Huh? Okay, excuse me. Well, three cheers for Melinda Kramer, whose only goal in life is to make a name for herself and get higher ratings. You want to say I told you so? Go to Ah, no, you didn't start it, honey. No, no. When I went to see Michael Grand, I knew I was going to antagonize him and embarrass him, and I didn't care. And I didn't care if Felicia got hurt either. Oh, boy. It was inexcusable. Well, you're being a little hard on yourself, aren't you? Maybe I'm uh, getting a little too aggressive. I'll have to work on that. Look, I don't care what you say. Michael Grand wasn't kidding when he said this wasn't over yet. The guy's an idiot. He's coming off the spool. Yeah, he's about to, to lose his hotel. He's, he, he's just right on the edge. No, what if he had gone over the edge, sweetie? What if he had hurt you? I was really worried that he was going like, to throw a punch at you or something. Come on, Paradise. You know what? You're starting to embarrass me a little bit. I would like to think that I could handle Michael Grant if he threw a punch at me. Hey, my money would have been on you both. Thank you, Cord. And thanks a lot for uh, stepping in there. A couple of real nice place shots. Uh, this whole little war might have been over once and for all. Oh, I don't know about that, Bo. I mean, I saw the look on the man's face. This little private war you two got going on. It's going to go on for a while. I hope so, Cord. I certainly do hope so. Megan, no. Your father is is quite sure that our marriage was probably invalid. Well, why? Well, for one thing, we never took a blood test. We didn't have a license. We had no Yes, witness. but you said your vows in front of a minister, right? Yes, we did. OK, so then in God's eyes, you were married. Yes, but it wasn't legal. And it certainly doesn't mean that Sarah is illegitimate. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know, this could send her into an emotional tailspin She's not as thick-skinned as I am. You're not as thick-skinned as you pretend you are. Vicki, I really don't want Sarah to know about this. Why? Sarah has every right to know about it, just as much a right as you do. And Clint should know about it, too. I think that Clint might see this as a threat to your marriage. No. Clint knows how much I love him. He knows how important he is to me. The only time in our marriage that we've ever had any trouble is when we've lied to each other, and I cannot begin to tell you how painful those times have been. 
as painful as this news might be to him? I mean, think of all the doubts and the questions that he's going no, to have. No, Megan, you don't understand our relationship. <sighs> okay, so maybe Clint wouldn't think anything of this, but I know Sarah would, and I just can't do that to her. Isn't there a way that you can destroy the marriage certificate and, and pretend like it never existed? Your father burned it yesterday. Well, then the problem is solved. We can just bury the past. Please, for everyone's sake. Megan, a few minutes ago, you were so happy to think that the world would finally know that you were my legitimate daughter. That doesn't matter. I know. Here. And that's what really matters, what you feel and you know in your heart. I mean, isn't that what made you search for me and eventually find me? Yes. And I thank God more and more every single day that I finally did find you. Are you feeling better, Ben? Yeah, the tea's making me feel a little better, I think. Thank you. Well, the dreams seem to have uh, brought you some conscious fears out to the surface, then. Listen, Dan, I, they're not so subconscious anymore. I am constantly worrying about this baby, and I'm trying not to. You know how much I believe in the power of positive thinking, but I just can't control my fears anymore. Have you had other dreams like this, Brenda? Yeah, I had one after that radiation scare. Hmm. Did Steve appear in it as well? No. It was Larry. He brought me... What? Why are you looking at me like a doctor? Because I am one. You know what I mean. Why did you come over here today? Well, I just was coming by, back from the hospital, and I just wanted to check up on you. Check up on me? Or, or, or give me a check up, or what? Well, that sounds like a very good idea. I just happen to have the necessary medical stuff in my car to take your blood pressure. Listen, Dan, I appreciate you coming by here very much. I like having visitors here, but I appreciate it when my guests sit down and visit with me and not giving me a physical or something. Come on, Brenda. It'll only take a minute. All right. If you promise me that you'll take the stethoscope off when we're finished. Scout's on it. Okay. Well, go get that stuff and then and let's get after it here, Doctor. I am not going to back down until I grind him into the ground. Michael, would you just calm down? No, I don't want you telling any, anything to Alicia about what happened over at Max's. She's going to find out oh. anyway. Of course she's going to find out. It'll be all over the evening news. Melinda Kramer will be grinning into the camera. Buchanan Grand Feud heats up film at 11. I don't understand why you're so upset about this. Now, you weren't over at the hospital today when she came barging over there, pumping Alicia and me with personal questions, trying to get information. She was probably just doing her job. Yes, a hatchet job, and Bo sent her on it. Would you forget about Bo? Forget about the feud. You've got far more important things to put your energy into. I have got to defend my reputation. Michael, believe me, Landview has a very short memory. Before long, this will be yesterday's news. Now, you've got a new hotel. You've got to get it back on its feet. You've got a baby on the way. These are the things you should be concentrating on. You're amazing. Here you are, cool, calm, and collected, brim full of common sense. And an hour ago, you were on the edge of hysteria. You don't need to remind me. I'm appalled that I waved the gun at Max. But I've had some time to think about things and get my priorities straight. Oh? What have you come up with? That it's over. I've lost my son. I've lost the one thing I really do care about in this world. But all the crying and all the hysterics are not going to bring him back, so I've got to get on with my life. Well, you're uh, sure handling it better than I thought you would. Well, I just have to take one day at a time and keep very, very busy. Well, what are you going to keep busy with? First of all, I'm going to concentrate all my attention on you and your hotel. So just forget about Bo Buchanan. Let him go on producing his silly little soap opera because you and I are going to make a success of this hotel in spite of him, and I promise you that. Ariel, you are a genius. I am? Why? Because you just said something that gave me a terrific idea. Oh, what did I say? Never mind. You go on home, and I'm going to put it into motion. What are you doing? Well, when it pans out, I'll tell you. Okay. Scoop! <laughs> Okay. It's not over, Bo. Not 
by a long shot. We're about to compare it to... Well? I don't like what it's telling me, Brenda. Oh, God. I thought I was doing all right, Dan. Yeah, well, so did I. But your blood pressure level is bordering on a danger level right now. And it could very well mean that your toxemia is going to get worse again. I don't know what else I can do. I'm coming in here. I am keeping my feet up. I'm resting. I've taken a leave of absence from work. Dan, I don't know what else I can do. Well, at this point, Brenda, it only seems like there's one logical Listen, answer. Listen, I don't want to hear about that. I am afraid that if I give birth to this child right now, he's not going to be ready. Okay? Now, Brenda, you're going to have to consider this. Why are you saying this? A week ago, you were vehemently opposed to anything like this. Why are you saying that now? Because a week ago, it was too premature, Brenda. At this stage in the child's development, it has a fighting chance to live. Now, I'm not discrediting the, the point where we said that we were going to wait, Brenda, but we can't wait anymore. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to even think about this, because when I do, I get upset, you see? And getting upset is the last thing I need to be doing know, right now, Dan. I know, I know, I know, I know. I understand that, Brenda. But you've got to realize no, that... No, no, that's the end of it. We're not talking about it. Subject closed. Brenda, please. You are a nurse. You know the dangers of toxemia. You could have a seizure. You can go into cardiac yes, arrest. I know what can happen. So why don't you take your head out of the sand, Brenda? Come on! I don't mean to get upset at you, Brenda, but if you have a seizure, there's a great chance that neither you or the child will oh. live. Now, if you have the child now, there's a chance that both you and the child could live. My God, isn't that what you want, Brenda? I can't deal with this right now. Dan, I'm so tired. And my nerves are just shot. I just need to get some sleep. Can you just get yourself, let yourself out? I'm not going anywhere. Oh, I am not what? going anywhere. I'm camping out right here on this couch. Why you do? This is really getting to be a habit with you. You know that, Dan? Yeah. Well, I get tenacious as a bulldog once I care about somebody. All right, you do what you want to do. You stay here. You build a campfire. Whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm going to bed. Thank you for trusting me. Do you realize that this is the very first time we've ever had an open talk like this? Yes, and it's really nice. I'm glad you said that, because I think it's nice. I can't believe I wasted so much time arguing and fighting with you and refusing to see the truth. Well, fortunately, that's over with now, so why don't we just uh, forget about it, all right? Well, I can't promise that I'm not going to disagree with you again. I wouldn't expect that. I don't want to change you. Well, it's too late for that. But I can promise you that I can show you some of my better qualities. I think I've seen a few of those already, too. You know, we have a lot to learn from each other. Mm-hmm. I have an idea. Why don't you tell me something that you've always wanted me to know, and I'll then tell you something about myself that I've always wanted you to know. Okay. But you go first. Okay. Um, I've always admired you for being the publisher of a major newspaper. And uh, I've been doing a little writing on the side. <laughs> and I'd like you to look at it and give me your honest opinion. I would be thrilled. But my honest opinion right now is that I couldn't give you an honest opinion. Why not? <laughs> because I'm your mother. Because you're my daughter. Maternal bias would get in the way. Vicki, how am I going to learn from you if you can't put your prejudices aside? Okay, I'll look at it. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> well, you mustn't laugh at me. I won't, I promise. Cross my heart. Okay. I watch your show. <laughs> no, really? Yes. And I think you are a wonderful actress. Oh, thank you. I've, uh, I've never seen a, a show like yours, a, a soap opera being... What, done or filmed, whatever you call it. Uh, I would love to come to your set sometime and watch you work if I could. 
Ask and you shall receive. I can set it up for tomorrow morning. Oh. In fact, I might even be able to uh, plan a little surprise. Oh. Now, Mary Lynn is doing one of her biggest scenes tomorrow. It'll be really interesting to watch, I think. It, it wouldn't bother her to have somebody watching her? Oh, no, I'm sure she'd be delighted to have you there. Oh. And so would Beau. Okay. So will you come? Yes, I'll be there bright and early, sure. Okay, terrific. Then I'll set things up for you. Well, what about the surprise you were talking about? Just show up at the set tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh, okay. Good night. Good night, Megan. Well, Al's all ready for bed. Great, thanks, Kel. Yeah. Uh, what, what happened to the party? I <laughs> thought it'd just be starting to rev up by now. Yeah, well, I guess you can thank me for bringing it to a screech and halt, right, Max? I apologize. I'm sorry. Forget it. Excitement helps business anyway. Who knows? I may make it a tradition. Thursday night fights at Max's place. Ooh, good idea. Uh, speaking of which, what are you going to do about publicity for this place? Uh, I haven't had a chance to work anything up yet. Why? Well, I had an idea. Maybe I can come by with my camera, take a couple shots of you and your new bar. Maybe even get Clint to run a feature article in the weekend section. Hey, that'd be great. When can you do this? Uh, tomorrow morning. You got it. Yeah, that's, that's great for me, too. I can come down and pose as a customer or something, you know? I don't know about that. Oh, hey, Billy. Max, come on. Never hurts to have a pretty lady in a picture. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Besides, it could help me get my modeling career off the ground, you know? Lord knows I haven't had much success making it as an actress. Mm -mm. I was wondering if I could come by the center tomorrow to see you. I'd sort of like to get a head start in learning how to adjust to, you know, when I lose my sight, you know, try how to live a normal life. I mean, if it's possible. Look, Austin, I still refuse to accept that, that you won't seek additional medical advice. I'm going blind. I don't need any more doctors telling me what I already know. I want you to know I'm going to be after you to see a specialist. OK. I've been warned. But I'd still like to come by and see you tomorrow at the center. About what? Um, Austin's going to be doing a little volunteer work. Doing what? Well, I'm going to be reading to the blind. I mean, as a volunteer, of course, it's sort of part of the parole program. I had to clear it. Sarah said it was okay by her. Sounds real good. You ready to go? Yeah. I'll call you later to set up a time. Okay. See you later. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Now, I realize Mr. Buchanan won't be very happy with the outcome, but what's more important, his happiness or the welfare of the show? Uh, Ted, you're not afraid of the Buchanans, are you? Good, because I don't think you're going to regret this at all. Well, no, how is this going to possibly hurt Bo? He's got his family money to fall back on. Right, right. I mean, in the end, he comes out not losing that much, and everybody else comes out a winner. Right, right. All right, uh, no, no need to thank me. It's just, it's a good business deal. So I will, uh, I'll see you in the morning then? All right, very good, Mr. Block. Bye-bye. many people it takes to put a show like this together. You must have introduced me to half the world by now. Oh, come here. I want to introduce you to the hair and makeup people. Oh. So, do you think an operation like this would be painful? Should I play discomfort? Some. But I think at this point we're going to assume that Tiffany's already been through the worst part. What's important is how you react when the bandages are removed. I'd imagine it would be like someone shining a large flashlight into my eyes after I've been walking around in the dark. Yeah, I think that's a good analogy. You should use that. I think your first impulse would be to shield your eyes, and then uh, when the actor who's playing the doctor... Hey, you guys. Are you anything? No, not at all. We were just talking about how Tiffany's going to react when she regains her sight. Yeah, you know, I'm really glad that you're getting your sight back. Maybe now we'll get a little romance going. Jack, <laughs> you're playing a priest. I don't really think they're going to let anything happen between us. Hey, this is a soap opera, right? Nothing ever gets in the way of a love affair, huh? Even the priesthood? Nope. Not even marriage. <laughs> Tiffany isn't married. You know, um, I think I'm gonna go rehearse my lines. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Yeah. I have a visitor I want you to meet. I think you already know her. Uh oh, wait, wait, wait. Lady, you got a pass? Right here, Mr. Smarty Pants. Ah. Uh, 
Okay, you all then. ready? Am I ready for what? D didn't you tell her? No, I thought I'd let you do the honors. No, no, why don't you go ahead? Does this have something to do with the secret you mentioned, the surprise you mentioned last night? Yeah. Well, when you said that you were a fan of the show, I called Bo and we decided to make you a star. What? That's right. You're going to play a nurse in Mary Lynn's hospital scene. You, you mean you want me to act? That's the idea, yeah. No, Bo, that's a terrible idea. I can't do that. But, Vicky. No, I can't. I really can't. No. No, you have to forget that. What's all this? This breakfast. I can see that. Where, where'd you get it all? Bernard, are you feeling all right? No, I don't feel very well. I had a pretty rough night. Come on, let's get you to the couch. <sighs> the dizziness didn't keep me awake. My head did. Oh. How bad were your headaches? I felt like they were fighting the Battle of Bull Run in there or something. Well, why didn't you come out here and get me? I just kept thinking if I slept through the night, I'd get up and I'd feel terrific today. Mm. How's your vision? It's blurred, Dan. Now, I've had this before, but these symptoms feel really different to me today. It's OK. Just relax. It'll be all right. I need to ask you something. If we delivered this baby today, do you think that it stands a chance of surviving? Well, Landview Hospital has one of the best neonatal care No, I know the this. statistics. I'm asking about my baby. It's got a pretty good chance. I don't want to lose it. Well, then you've only got one choice, Bernie. You're going to have to have it now. It's your only hope. Will you take me to the hospital? I took the liberty of jotting down a few notes last night in the middle of the night, but you know, then it came to me. We don't have to worry about the locals, what they think. We don't need them to make this hotel a success. How are we going to fill the vacant rooms? Michael, we should be appealing to the jet set. And right here, I've written down a couple of the international magazines, including Alicia's. And I'm going to call them and, and see what their prices are for advertising. Who is that? Oh, that's Ted Block. He runs the agency that sponsors Fraternity Row. Well, does he just make it a habit of coming into hotel lobbies and setting up business? Well, he got here a little while before you came in. Uh, I don't know exactly why he's here. Mm. So what do you got? Michael, Michael, I just have to tell you how excited I am about this material you've given me. I think it's the... Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm Ted Block. Huh? Oh, uh, Ted, this is uh, Gabriel Medina. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is fantastic. I think it's the best thing for Fraternity Row. I want to thank you also for putting me in touch with that friend of yours in New York. Ted, no need to thank me. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be of help. What friend in New York is that? As I was saying, uh, there's no need to thank me, Ted. Uh, I hope it doesn't cost too many waves over at the studio, however. <laughs> in this industry, people have to learn to either sink or swim. If the cast and crew of Fraternity Row can't put the show's interests out of their personal lives, well, then they have no business working in television. Uh, now, i got to get over to the studio and break the news to them. Good, good. Michael, thank you. No, I mean it. I Ted, mean it. my pleasure. My pleasure. And a pleasure to meet you, Miss Medina. Perhaps we'll see each other again. It's my pleasure. Take care. Well, I can smell a setup a mile away, and this one reeks of revenge. What makes you think that? Oh, come on, don't be innocent with me. This is part of your plan at getting back at Bo, isn't it? Let's just say that he will regret the day he decided to tangle with Michael Grant. Max, why don't you move that little umbrella over towards you? Towards me? Yeah. Furnace. That'll be good. Ooh, nice. This is good. Ready? Ooh. Okay. That's it. All right. done. Oh, have you finished your whole roll yet? Yeah, well, in fact, uh, if you haven't noticed, I've already finished about three. Mm. Well, why don't, why don't you take another one and I can go upstairs and put on something sexier? Kelly, we're not <laughs> shooting a major motion picture here, just a few publicity stills. Don't you want to appeal to a broad clientele, Max? What happened to the girl that laid herself in front of the campus uh, queen float protesting the exploitation of women? Oh, Max, come on, give the young lady a break here. She can't help if she was bitten by the shutter bug. Okay, okay. So I like to be in the limelight. What's wrong with that? Nothing, and there's nothing wrong with the photos we took. So let's just uh, call it a wrap, huh? 
Hey, anything you say, boss? Thank you. Max. So listen, Court. Hmm. How's Tina doing? She's gonna be getting back soon? She's doing great. Uh, we're... She has some more details to take care of. She mm -hmm. told me she'd be on the next available flight home. Tina's your wife, right? Yeah, yeah, she sure is. How long have you been married? Uh, well, about a couple of months this time around. <laughs> Where is she? She's in Europe. She's designing some hotels. You, you guys are newlyweds, and she's halfway around the world on a job? Yeah. Boy, if I was her, I don't think I could keep my eyes off you for a minute. Oh, uh, well, actually, I'm the one who uh, took my eyes off her. Oh. See, I, I was in Europe for a while myself, and then I had to get back. See, I had this thing called a, a job to take care of. And she let you? Doesn't she realize there's got to be, oh, at least a dozen women in Landview who would just uh, love to get their hands on you? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I'm sure those dozen women uh, know that I'm a married man. <laughs> so what? Uh, I think once you meet Tina, Whoa. you will uh, realize why she doesn't worry about having any rivals here in Landview or anywhere else, for that matter. True. Uh, and why is that? Uh, Max? Um, she's one in a million. Right, Court? Amen to that. All right. Did you get my robe, Dan? Yeah, I got everything in the bag. Okay. Everything's gonna be all right, isn't it? That's right. Next time you walk into this room, you're going to be the proud mother of a healthy, happy baby. Oh, I hope so. Okay. Come on, Vicky. It would be fun. No, I, I'd make a fool out of myself in front of millions of people. I... Megan does it every day. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, actually, the girl that was supposed to play this role called in sick last night, so Megan called me with this great idea, and it's fake. No, no, Bo, I, I can't do it. I'm sorry, I really can't. But think of all the publicity we get. And you could write it up in the banner. You could tell your readers what it was like to be a soap queen for oh. a day. No. Hi, everyone. What's going mm -hmm. on? We're trying to get Vicky to play an under five on today's show. Hi. Oh, that's a terrific idea. Oh, you think so? You do it. Well, what part would you be playing? The nurse. Oh, Vicky, that's great. That means that you would be in my scene. Come on, it'll be fun. No. No, you, you don't understand. You see, when I was in grade school, I, I, I was in a Christmas pageant. I was playing one of the wise men, the one who had to give the myrrh to the baby Jesus. And, and when the curtain went up, I just froze. I, I just stared. And then when it came my turn to say what I was giving the Christ child, all I could say was, Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but, but believe me, it wasn't a lot of fun at all. Well, we'll just strike all references to the word myrrh from the script. Now, come on, will you do it? Oh, Bo, no. Vicky, look, consider this like a step in our getting to know each other. You couldn't see what it's like for me to stand in front of the cameras every day. Oh, all right. All right, but you're going to be very sorry because we're going to have to do the same thing a hundred times till I get you're it right. You're going to be great. You can listen. Do me a favor, Megan. Take Vicky down to wardrobe, okay? okay. I'll let her out of your sight. All right. Here's your script. Script? No, don't worry. You don't have any lines. Don't worry. Just a lot of stage directions. You're going to be an assistant to the doctor, and you can just follow his lead, and you'll be fine. From your mouth to God's ear. You know, I'm really glad that Megan and Vicky are spending time together trying to work this thing out. You know, I know the more time they spend together, the closer they're going to get. Mm-hmm. Do I detect a note of jealousy in your voice? Maybe just a little tiny bit. You know, I love spending time with Vicky, but I think right now Megan needs to be with her. I mean, those two need a chance to get to know each other. What was that for? That was because you are the most giving, most beautiful, most wonderful woman that I have ever met in my life. <laughs> in five, four, three, two. When is the doctor going to get here? He'll be here soon. What if the operation isn't a success? What if he takes the bandages off and I'm still blind? Tiffany, Tiffany, you must have faith. Faith that God has heard our prayers and that you'll be able to see again. 
Here's the doctor now. Morning, Doctor. Morning, Tom. Tiffany. Doctor, are you going to take the bandages off now? Yes. And just so you know what I'm doing, I'm going to use the small scalpel first to make the first cut in the bandages, and then I'll use the scissors to make the final cut. You understand? Yes. Tom, would you mind uh, closing the blinds, please? Sure. May I have the scalpel, nurse? Nurse? The scalpel, if you will. Thank you. Scissors? Which scissors? The scissors. No, it's all right. Are you okay? Yes, I'm sorry. Did I hurt you? Did you just stay away from me. I'm sorry. Who hired this blithering idiot? I did. This is my sister-in-law. Do you have a problem with that? Oh, no. Not at all. Absolutely not. I'll just uh, go back up to the control room, and we'll retake the scene from the entrance of the uh, doctor and nurse. Uh, good work. Terrible. I cannot do no Vicky. Now, I didn't inherit my acting abilities from my father. I know that you have this in you. You just have to relax. Vicky, <sighs> please do the scene. These bandages are really making my eyes itch. <sighs> All right, I'll take another stab at it. Oh, God forbid. I knew you were a trooper. All right, let's clear the set. I'm sorry. Hey, folks, tape is rolling. Okay. In five, four, three, two. Here is Morning, Tom. Morning, Tiffany. Doctor. doctor, are you going to take the bandages off now? Yes. Uh, just so you know what I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm going to use a small scalpel to make the first cut in the bandages, and then I'll use the scissors to make the final cut. You understand? Yes. Tom, would, would you mind uh, closing the blinds a little bit? Sure. May I have the scissors, nurse? Stop the scene, Bo. Hey, Ted, what are you doing here? Just stop the scene now. I have an announcement to make that affects everybody here. No, we're right in the middle of it. Now, Bo! Cut! What? Listen up, uh, everybody. Uh, could you please gather around over here? Ted has an announcement that he wants to make. They're all yours, Ted. Thanks, Bo. Thanks so much. First of all, I'd like to express the sponsor's gratitude to Bo Buchanan for, for giving us the facilities here at WVLE after the fire that destroyed our, our Philadelphia studio. Now, we had a three-month tentative contract. That's up now. And as I was drawing up the renewal contract, another very interesting offer was presented to me, which I believe is going to take Fraternity Row to the top of the ratings. And what offer is that, Ted? We are moving the entire show, cast, crew, and sets to New York City. Well, uh, I just actually, uh, you could just tell Miss Viggy that uh, that station wagon of hers is running just as good as new, just like I promised her. You know, it's something. A little thing like this can take a big car like that and screech it to a halt. Isn't that something? Uh, how much does Mrs. Buchanan owe you? Oh, uh, nothing. But she insists upon paying you, sir. Just tell her it's on the house. You see, I'm family. And where I come from, family does for family. Well, in lieu of payment, uh, at least allow me to give you a slice of Cook's famous apple pie. Well, I'll tell you what, you toss in a glass of milk and you can forget all about the bill. Very good, sir. <laughs> Why, there you be, old Cousin Bo. <sighs> Look at that silly grin of yours. Just thinking you got the world by the tail, don't you? Sarah and all. 
Well, I'm here to tell you. What could I have done? I put fingerprints all over. Yeah. That's it. Fingerprints. Bo Buchanan, I find your crime to be despicable beyond words. So what? I don't have to live by society's rules. I'm rich. Have you no remorse? Look, where I come from, we live by the code of the West. If a man so much as looks at you cross-eyed, he spends eternity pushing up daisies. And you, Bo Buchanan, will spend the rest of your life in prison for the murder of Michael Grant. Yeah? Well, I am the code of the West. And what I want, I get.